This is the just announced Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. And when you first look at it, it doesn't make any sense. Compared to Samsung's very highest end phones, which can be had for like the same price now, every camera is smaller and less capable. You can expect your battery to take longer to charge and deplete about 20% faster. There's less room for cooling, so the chip won't perform as well. And yeah, this is more compact. It folds, right? Well, not really. I mean, it is shorter, but it is also thicker. So the actual volume being taken up is about the same. And yet, even with all of this, why am I drawn to this Z Flip 5 so much? Why is it that my curiosity was so sparked when I saw that first one? Or that I very nearly switched over to it when I tested the Z Flip 4 last year? And that now we have the 5, I've decided that I'm actually going to try and use this thing on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, let's start with what's new. The storage has doubled from 128 gigabytes to 256, although the price has also gone up too, so that's not really a perk. The build though is a win. It's thinner for starters, about two millimeters thinner when folded up, but the best part of this is how they've achieved that thinness. It's a new hinge, one that for the very first time on a Samsung Flip can, praise the Lord, close without a gap. Well, there is a tiny little hole here, but it's basically gapless. And this is a big deal because it's not just that it looks better and it's a less weird shape and it takes up less space, but it also creates less room for rogue particles and pocket dust to just find their way inside, which trust me, use any folding phone for a period of time is a problem and is probably also one of the main causes of you just ending up with a scuffed inner screen, no matter how careful you think you're being. Speaking of which, this inner screen is now 25% more resistant to scratches. And the outer body is protected by Armour Aluminium and Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which I'm told has the strength of ceramic, which is pretty cool considering that ceramic has long been reserved for the highest end luxury phones because of its scratch resistance. Only thing I don't like, and this has kind of been an ongoing pet peeve of mine, is that when you open the phone, it doesn't snap into that fully open position. It's still just like a tiny bit flaccid, which also means a tiny bit bent. They really should make it so that opening it feels just as tactile and satisfying as closing it, because that is fun. But then the screen is, I would say, not just a big jump, but the biggest jump since the very first flip, specifically this cover screen. I mean, just compared to Samsung's last phone, it is 278% bigger. It now looks like a folder and it can do a lot more. You used to be able to have a peek at your notifications, check your calendar and make a quick voice recording, but we're talking like 10, 20% of the overall functionality of the phone. Now, I'd call it 50. There's 13 different widgets available at launch, and they say there's more on their way. And essentially, each one is its own home screen. You swipe between them, and if you want to move quickly, you pinch out and you pick the one you want. Plus, you can swipe to the left to check your notifications and down to fiddle with quick settings. It's all very smooth and slick for what is effectively a secondary custom operating system on the same phone. And the other thing that I'm noticing about the way this whole thing is being framed is that it's all about the personality. Samsung's not really trying to pitch this front screen as a way to quickly check things, it's more as a, a tool for self-expression, and that it achieves. I actually cannot believe how much you can customize it. Everything from the battery percentage indicator to how to display notifications to the exact shade of color that you want and in what way it fades to another color. You could absolutely lose yourself in it, and I plan to do exactly that. Side note, you can also see how much Samsung is pushing this whole fashion angle here with the sheer number of cases being offered, including these rather fancy smart ones that when applied will sync the wallpaper on your phone and even your Galaxy Watch to match. Plus, you can now use apps on the front. Not all apps, which Samsung could have allowed you to do, but I guess they want you to only use the apps that have been specifically optimized to make the most of this strange folder-like shape. So there's only like 10 at launch. The screen is now big enough though to get a full QWERTY keyboard on, which means you can also message. It's a little fiddly, but completely usable with one hand, which is a luxury that I'd almost forgotten was even possible. Okay, there's a couple of things that I do <laughs> don't like. Not you, I'm so sorry. Milo's been replaced by his chunkier London counterpart. <laughs> There's still a crease on this main display. They say it's improved, but it's still very noticeable. And I just think doesn't exactly scream, hey, I'm a market leading fifth generation product. And then while this inner panel is a 120 Hertz display that can ramp its refresh rate all the way down to one Hertz, the cover screen, which is my other gripe, is locked at 60. And so what this means is that even when you're trying to use it in this super low power, always on state, this screen is refreshing like 60 times more than it needs to. So it wastes battery. There's an upgraded chip, the Snapdragon 
8 Gen 2 4 Galaxy, which is basically the same Snapdragon chip you see in all top-end Android phones this year, but with a little boost to how fast it runs. I'm actually quite excited about this, not because the phone necessarily needs it, more because these flip phones feel so perfect for game emulation, which I plan to do a lot of and is super demanding. And then this chip also has a slightly tweaked image signal processor, which allows the phone to take the data from the camera and process it in a way that Samsung likes. And that is the final key upgrade, the cameras. Not so much in terms of hardware. I mean, there's a new lens that's a little bit clearer and reduces sun flares, but it's more the software. You can double tap the power button to bring it up immediately. You've got new portrait modes and better quality portrait modes. You can mess around with zoom when you're on the cover. Couldn't do that before. Plus, you've just got more space to see yourself and frame your shot properly. So while this Z Flip 5 might not feel as ambitious as Motorola's Razer 40 Ultra and its edge-to-edge -edge cover screen, or the crease-free folding design of Oppo's N2 Flip, at the same time, you can't say Samsung's resting on their laurels doing nothing. This is a big upgrade. And this company is still widely regarded as having the best foldable software. With this launching on Android 13L, the very latest, with a promise of four full years of major Android updates, and the most seamless integration of foldable features into third-party apps. Like, just for example, this thing has a camera feature that tracks your face to always keep you in the middle, which is already cool for making like an Instagram reel. But then the feature can factor in when you fold the phone, adapt around it so that you can still see yourself in the top half, and then even work natively within these other apps, like Instagram, so you can even go live using it. So you have a level of continuity here that others are still catching up with. Oh yeah, and the flex mode is updated. So when you fold up an app that supports it, everything adapts so that you can control your entire phone using just the lower half. All of this stuff is cool. It makes the most of what the phone is, but none of it really explains why the phone even exists in the first place. Why is it that people keep paying this premium to compromise on specs for a phone that takes up basically the same volume? According to Samsung, 70% of the customers buying foldable phones are choosing this flip style over the technically higher end fold style. Are they crazy? Well, no. But what is crazy is that we overtook Samsung in subscribers a long time ago, and we're now this close to overtaking Apple. So the sub to the channel would be Sambitious. Quite proud of that one. <laughs> I would say there's five key things that make this flip as surprisingly appealing as it is. The first, and the most obvious, is the style. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is fun. Flicking it open for something important, snapping it shut to end a call. There's a big part of it that feels almost toy-like. And it's such a unique prospect that if you like it, there's a good chance you're gonna love it. And if you love it, you're gonna be willing to overlook a lot of other things to make it work. And thankfully, while the cameras are one of those things that you will have to forgive, because this there's no way you can fit a modern large camera sensor into the depth of one of these halves. They do also benefit from the ability to fold, in that you can use the same set of pretty good cameras for both the rear and the front. So if we say that the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 10 out of 10 camera system on the rear, then its selfie camera is about a 5. Whereas with the Z Flip, you're getting a 7 on both, with full 4K 60 frame per second video, plus the ability to use the base as a sort of baked in stand to prop the phone up at whatever angle you want. But it's the mindfulness that this phone can give you, that is what really interests me. The fact that you can just keep the phone folded up and you know that you're reachable but still distance from your distractions is, for me, a game changer. And so I really like that here, even though the cover screen is now more capable and can do a lot of technically full screen phone things, Samsung's done this with an understanding that the objective is not just to make the front screen like the inner screen. Because, I mean, if they were the same thing, then what would be the point in unfolding it? So instead, what you can do here is decide on the inside which apps you want to allow yourself access to on the outside. This is brilliant. So the way I'm gonna set mine up, for example, is to allow maps and WhatsApp and anything I might need, but keep away anything I might want. So you know how a lot of people like to have two separate phones, one for work, one for pleasure? This one flip phone is kind of like having both of those, but folded into one. It creates this really distinct separation between a device that is simple and functional and not distracting when folded up, to a device that, when you finish your work and you just wanna chill out, is expansive and enjoyable and indulgent. It makes it feel like a window into your social medias and your connected life without being a door that you can just stroll through and get lost in before you've realized what you're doing. Plus, I actually like the fact that when someone calls while you're in this folded position, it'll automatically go to loudspeaker, which really suits this whole hands-off vibe, and that if you want to silence it, you don't even need to pick the phone up. You just place your hand on top, kind of like suffocating it. 
The battery also benefits from this being a flip phone. I mean, it sounds bad on the face of it. This is a 3,700 mAh cell in a market full of phones packing 5,000. But thanks to efficiency improvements, you can get an extra hour versus last year's Flip 4. And if you are actually planning to use a good mix of both the inner screen and the outer screen, then because the outer screen is so small, you'll save a lot of battery there. And finally, there is the compactness, which, as I've already said, I think is a little overrated. I mean, the volume difference between this and, say, this is negligible. But there is one distinct benefit to being short and stubby like this women's clothing. It's only when I met my fiance a few years ago that it dawned on me just how little depth there is in women's jeans and women's workout leggings. So it fixes that. Let me know if you have any burning questions about this phone. I'll answer as many as I can, and I will catch you in the next one.